Good afternoon, everyone. It is always wonderful to join with you. We are with you, and we'd like everyone to center into this moment now, recalling that now is the only time that is. Let go of all thoughts of the past, all future predictions or any distracting thoughts that may arise. Just let them pass by as clouds pass through the sky. So we are here and you are as well. So of course, we have been talking about awakening and we are going to continue to talk about awakening because that is what this time is. Time for awakening, you see. And so, of course, Right now, as you experience life and the world, it looks as though it is one of the worst of your experience. But we want you to realize that it's playing an integral part in your awakening because it is actually a prompting for you to awaken. You don't want this anymore. The violence, the catastrophes, the tragedies, the seeming control and all of that is not what you want anymore. What we are teaching you and we have been teaching you, we're going to continue to teach you is you are a mind and not a body, which means you have the full capability to decide how you want to feel. No one else can make that decision for you. No one else can tell you how to feel. And even if someone did tell you how to feel, you can tell yourself what it is you want to feel, you see. Nobody, nowhere could ever tell you that they can influence your mind, you see. Being the mind, that is the dreamer of the dream rather than the figure in the dream, you are the one who have the full capability to decide what thoughts you let in, what thoughts you align with, and what thoughts you let go of. Does this make sense to everyone? So we were saying to the channel that Well, with all of this going on, or seeming to go on in your dream, in the world, we wanted you to realize something, that this is but a dream, and that all this stuff coming across your awareness, just turn on the news, and you have something to work with that you can choose to use to change your mind about rather than holding on to what it is you think. But instead, turning to the Holy Spirit who is in your right mind and looking to it for its guidance, you see. Remember, you have but two parts to your mind. You have the ego mind, which is conflict, pain, darkness, etc. All of the ephemeral. That's the ego mind, the ego thought system. And the Holy Spirit thought system, which is the remembrance of who you really are, who is eternal, and who is love, and light, and peace, you see. So you want to begin to choose to align with the mind of peace in all of your interactions before you do anything in the world so that you are operating from a mind of peace no matter what. And what we want you to realize is no matter what is seeming to happen to you, no matter what your circumstances in life seem to be, you can always choose to maintain a peace of mind, you see. No one can take that away from you because you are the thinker of your own thoughts, you see. No one else can think for you. 
So, well, we are here. We were also saying to the channel, with all this stuff going on in the world and all of these things coming up in the news, we were telling her that we want to, to realize that all news in the world is fake news. Let that sink in. All news in the world is fake news. Remember, there is no order of illusion, you see. There is no hierarchy of illusion. It's all the same, meaning it is all illusion. So one thing that seems more real than something else in the news is not more real than anything else in the news in the world, you see, because all of it is equally illusion. Nothing more real than the other. All of this is but a dream. So. Yes. And so we want you to begin to look on life in this way as well, to remind the mind that this all is but illusion. None of it is more real than anything else. It is all the same thing. It is all part of the dream. And you being the dreamer of the dream can always choose to change your mind about your dream, okay? That means you can choose to give up your own judgments and look to the Holy Spirit for correct perception instead, you see. So that's the willingness to give up your own thoughts, your own beliefs, and so on, to be shown what is the truth, which is always peace, always light, always loving, always kindness, gentleness, and so on. Another thing we want to remind you is that awakening is gentle. It's a step-by-step -step process. It is a gentle step-by-step -step process. So be kind to yourself throughout awakening. Be gentle on yourself throughout awakening, but be firm with yourself as well. Meaning, let yourself align with truth. And then, rather than letting the world direct your way, you see. Does this make sense to everyone? You want to give up on thinking that you need to have any influence from the world in your mind, you see. Remember, being the dreamer of the dream, you can choose what you think, you see. You don't need the world to tell you what to think. We really want you to realize that because we want you to remember that you are not a victim of the world, but of your own thinking, your own mind. And you can always choose to change your mind. You can always choose to change your thinking. So we are here. And we are ready for questions. Thank you. This question is from Preston. I have questions for Jesus. I recently had an inner vision of like a cross of light that came upon me and it felt very spiritual. Can you help me understand this? I want to speak with you directly. How do I develop this skill? So to address the first question, you were saying that this vision felt very spiritual to you. Well, trust your inner guidance. Of course, it is spiritual. In fact, it is love coming through to connect with you. 
you see it's the love that you already are the love that you share with all you see so and then to get in touch with how to communicate with us in this way is to begin to practice setting your own ideas of how things should be aside you see and let the holy spirit guide your way meaning turn to the holy spirit and ask how to see certain things to see well not certain things but how to see everything you see rather than relying on your own idea of how to see things does this make sense and see in this way you begin to let go of your false self concepts and that opens your mind to true guidance you see and the more that you practice letting go of your own ideas of how things should be, the easier it will be for the Holy Spirit to reach you. Because the Holy Spirit is always talking to you. But there just needs to be a fine tuning of your mind to align with it first. Does this make sense? Yeah, Preston's not here, but I'll answer for him. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, this question comes from Jim. In A Course in Miracles, it states, the ego does not know and the soul cannot perceive. Do all questions come from the ego mind? And if so, do any answers received from another person? also come from the ego? I guess it would depend on the nature of the question, but I am curious. Well, we're just going to say yes to all of it, and then we're going to come in to help you with this. So, do all questions come from the ego mind? Yes. Because who you really are does not have a question, you see. Who you really are just is and is without question. Does this make sense? Thank you for answering my question and thank you for your insight. I send everyone here so much love, light, and peace, and yes. Wonderful. And of course, that is sent back to you as well. So, and the other parts of this question. It was, uh, I guess it would depend on the nature of the question, of whether or not it was uh, ego. Yes, you can always ask the Holy Spirit, am I perceiving this correctly? Or help me to see how you see, you see, which is how to perceive the way that you perceive. Help me to align with how you are. And the question of, will you please show me the way, opens up your mind to be guided, you see. A good question, though, that you can ask, which does not come from your ego, which is, how do I want to feel? Okay. And this is going forward in your life, your daily life, so that you get in touch with what it is you want to experience and how it is you want to feel, you see. So that you have, we, we, we have called this an anchor. It anchors your experience, you see. So you make up your mind. You want to have this experience. You want to feel this way. And you're going to continue to bring your mind back to that decision throughout your day. And so that kind of question is not from the ego. The ego asks a lot of questions, questions to distract you from present awareness of love. Does this make sense? Makes so much sense. Wonderful. So, and then you said the questions that someone else asks this is this correct? Yeah, the wall. Uh, if 
ifs, do any answers received from another person also come from the ego? Sometimes spirit can speak through somebody who is open enough and it will come through, but you will feel that. You will have that intuitive recognition that that was an answer from spirit. Does this make sense? Meaning your mind no longer analyzes anything and it just comes to an aha or a clarity peace of mind you yes. see and so in that way yes yes answers can come come through others and you can even see an answer on a billboard and etc things like that you see but that is needing you to tune into to it you see so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Next question comes from Chris. Can a world of bodies that is free of guilt exist? Or is guilt the original seed so that where there are bodies, there must be guilt? Could there be a dream of separation, perhaps one without guilt, pain, fear, and death, that the mind of God finds pleasing and worthy of eternity? Thank you for that question. Firstly, the first part, which was, can a dream of bodies exist? Please, please continue with. Yes, uh, it was, can a world of bodies that is free of guilt exist? Free of guilt, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Or is guilt the original? But here's the thing. When you are experiencing the world that is free of guilt, it means you're not in the world anymore. That doesn't mean that you're physically out of the world, but you no longer identify with being in the world, you see. But instead, you are in a world of peace, which is a state of mind. Does this make sense? It does. Wonderful. And then the next part. Is guilt the original seed so that where there are bodies, there must be guilt? It's the belief in the body that guilt arises, you see. If you knew the truth, you wouldn't believe the bodies, you see. And so there would be no guilt. Guilt and the ego go hand in hand. The ego and the body do as well, you see. But without that guilt and just a gentle smile and a laugh to think that you could ever be separate, it all fades away. Not that you're suddenly not going to be aware of bodies or that you're not going to be aware of your own, but you will stop taking it seriously. And so it becomes less and less. Does this make sense? And we are going to say this to answer and to wrap this up, that there's nothing in the world that God would make eternal because God isn't even paying attention to the world, because if God were paying attention to the world and taking it seriously, it would be eternal. Does this make sense? Sort of. Okay. Well, let that sink in. It's a dream. You see, it is not real and it will never be real. Who you are is outside of the dream. Who you are is outside of the world. The world is the dream you see, and does not truly exist. So really there is no world in truth. So it's just a dream. In fact, everything in the world is ephemeral. Nothing here is eternal, really. And we're talking about form. Nothing in form is eternal, and nothing in form will ever be eternal. It is all a hallucination, a dream. You see, albeit vivid, but not, not real, you see. 
And so we are going to say that that was the ego's wish. This is the tiny mad idea, the desire to have more than the everything, okay? That's to say, I want more than the everything because God is everything, which means love is everything, which means who I really am is everything, but that's still not enough. That's still not enough to the ego. To the ego, it says it still wants something more. And so from that tiny mad idea, an entire world arose. And that's the world that you perceive today, you see. So that is what is asking for forgiveness, the thought that there can be more than the everything. That means lightening up about it and stop taking it so seriously, you see. Because to take seriously is to make real in your mind. And remember this, everything is in your own mind, you see. Does this make sense? Waiting for an answer. Chris is... Seems as though he's gone off. Well, to move on. Wonderful. Yes, thanks. Wonderful, <laughs> wonderful. Okay. Uh, this one, this question is two questions from Jane. Four or five years ago, I had two dreams about God and Jesus appearing in the parting clouds with trumpeting angels who are taking people up to join them. I was not taken up. The dream shook me. I searched online and, and found that this was a prophecy called the rapture. Having very little religious education, I was not previously aware of this. Around the same time, my husband had a dream that shook him too. It was about a collapse of society and people were in chaos, rioting and looting. He was helping those in distress and directing people my way for medical attention as I am a, a registered nurse. Since listening to your videos, my feelings now is that the dreams were preparing us to wake up. Could you please tell me what, if anything, these dreams are? Well, first of all, you received this from the higher to come through and how do we want to put this? It is just showing you what things were probabilities, possibilities to come up in the dream. Does this make sense? Not quite. Okay. So remember, everything here is a dream. And probabilities are, this is a probable thing, not necessarily going to happen. None of this is set in stone, you see. None of it is set in stone. It's always fluctuating. It's always changing. And so it depends on where consciousness is in the moment. And so it took that turn, you see. It was just an awareness of what may come up. And so what do you see did seem to come into this, you see. Does this make sense? Hmm. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Now there was another part to this we wanted to address about how everybody was taken up, but you were not. This is correct. Uh, 
Yes. We want to explain to you what that is, is showing you what your ego thinks about you, you see. It's saying everyone else is worthy and innocent and can be taken up, but you can't, you see. And that's the original mistake, that you are a sinner or that you are cast out of heaven and not lo no longer allowed back in. That's the ego's idea, you see. Does this make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. In fact, all of this, all that was seen in your dream and in your husband's dream, those are all ideas from the ego, okay? You see? Remember, true reality is formless and light. Does this make sense? But it can come through in visions and in dreams, in symbols, which is what you saw. Both of you did. So it was simply showing you where your mind is. Does this make sense? Yes. Is there anything else? That's it. Wonderful. Next question comes from Deb. There is much mention in the course about freedom and that the Son of God is free. Some have said that this focus on and endorsement of freedom in the course lends support to the defiance of and disagreement with things such as mask mandates, social distancing, and quarantine requirements, and that submitting to these is contrary to the lesson that we are under no laws but God's. Could you explain what the course means yes. by, quote, freedom, and whether it has anything to do with freedom from mask mandates, social distancing, or quarantine requirements? Perfect question. Perfect question. The freedom we speak of in the Course is freedom of mind, which doesn't always mean freedom in form. Does this make sense? And when we say, you are under no laws but God's, that is truth, you see. So your mind is under no laws but God's. That's your right mind, you see. Your wrong mind, which operates in the world and believes and identifies with the world, seems to find itself ruled by a myriad of other laws. Does this make sense? But what you want to do is align with the truth of you, which is you as God created you, which is the you that's under no laws but God's. But remember this, this is a dream. And all these things that are playing out in your dream are simply there for your awareness to look at and to say, Illusion, too, you say, and forgiveness rather than holding on to it. And as far as mask mandates go, quarantine and all of that, don't take it seriously. What's happening is this is, again, form and content. Because if the content of your mind is a mind of freedom, it wouldn't matter to you what happens to the physical body. You see, because you remember that that freedom we speak of is a state of mind, and that state of mind is always active and ready to be chosen, no matter what seems to be going on in your experience. Does this make sense? And the mistake here, we would say, is to use the course to resist things that happen in the world. Does this make sense? Yes. So it's, it's basically when it's misunderstood, it feels as though you want to argue with the world. When what we are saying is to choose your peace of mind, choose the peace of mind, which is within you. And that's where your peace is, you see. 
rather than looking to the world to be peace. Does this make sense? Yes. Wonderful. You don't want to argue with illusion because to argue with illusion is to make it real to you. You see, if you could just say, okay, this is part of the dream. And yeah, physically, it might be uncomfortable. And to the body, it might feel threatening. But to my mind, it can do no harm. Because my mind is in a constant state of peace, as it is, you see. For it is not in form. It is not part of the dream. Meaning, it is not a figure in the dream, but the dreamer of the dream, you see. And being the dreamer of the dream, I can choose if I want to align with a state of mind of peace or a state of mind of conflict. And that's really the two choices you always have. Am I going to operate from a mind of conflict or am I going to operate from a mind of peace? So if you want to operate from a mind of peace, you align with that state of mind and you take that into every situation, meaning you just go about your life as an example of peace, you see, as one who operates from a peace of mind rather than conflict. You don't fight with life. You don't fight with the illusion, but you just see that, yes, this is illusion and this cannot affect me in truth because I am not form, you see. I am the mind that thought this up. Does this make sense? Oh, yes, thank you. You're welcome. Does this answer your question? Yes. Wonderful. Another thing we were talking to the channel about, there's a lot of things spoken of in the news about information and misinformation. Remember how we said all news is fake news in the world? Well, we want to tell you this too. All information in the world is misinformation. None of this is real. None of it. And we mean that absolutely none of it. And when we said all news is fake news, we mean that too. That means it's all illusion. It's all fake. It's all a dream. Nothing is more dream than anything else, meaning there is no hierarchy of illusion. Everything is the same. It is all illusion, whether it be filled with happiness or filled with strife. It's still illusion, you see. Does this make sense to everyone? And so all of it looks simply to forgiveness, you see. Forgiving the mind from ever thinking that it could be anything other than it is, which is love, you see. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, next question is from Diane. Who says, I have a difficult time discerning the wisdom of the Holy Spirit from my own ego voice when I am fearful. What thoughts can I start my day with to open my mind to the Holy Spirit's wisdom and keep it clear of the ego's voice, which answers every time I feel afraid? Okay. Another good question. They're all good questions. But with this one, we want to remind you that if fear is present, that means the ego is active. Does this make sense? Meaning if you find your mind in a state of fear, trust that what you're getting in your mind is from the ego because the ego is fear. Does this make sense? Waiting for an answer. And what you want to do is when you notice fear in your mind, just say to yourself, there it is again. There's the fear that's the, that part of my mind that seeks to remain separate. That's that part of my mind 
that it wants more than the everything. That's that part of the mind that needs forgiveness, you see. And it isn't that that part of your mind needs forgiveness, but it's the belief that it's even there that needs forgiveness, you see. So how to start your day? First of all, when you wake up in the morning, remember you are in class. Your life is your classroom. You have but two choices in teachers. You have either the Holy Spirit or the ego. The Holy Spirit will guide you along towards peace. And that's peace of mind, you see. Or the ego who will take you along to any kind of way it will find to put you in conflict, you see. So in the morning, wake up, open your eyes, you're in class. Who is your teacher? I choose the Holy Spirit to be my guide. Okay. What kinds of thoughts come from the Holy Spirit? Thoughts that direct you to peace, that take you to an inner calmness, you see. And that's presence, you see. Practicing presence, being in the now. The ego mind, which is the mind of conflict, which would be the teacher of conflict, is always looking for future results or analyzing past scenarios. And so if you find your mind going in either direction, stop right there, notice it, and then say, okay, I'm centering back in, turning within to that inner state of calm that is within me. And from there, I'm going to choose my teacher again, the Holy Spirit, the one who knows peace and gives only peace. And so that's how to start your day. And then as you go along in your day, you just notice where your mind kicks up and you go in different directions. But notice when it does, and instead of judging it for going in a different direction, just lovingly say, okay, I let my mind go again, mind wandering and all that. And now that I'm aware of that, I'm going to forgive it and choose again. You see, remember everything we teach always has to do with choosing again. Does this make sense? Waiting for Diane. <laughs> and really just maintaining that that distance or putting that distance between yourself and the ego mind will help you to just simply be the observer of what you experience. So you'll see the thoughts coming in or you'll feel, feel it coming in. And by feeling, you will know what direction to go in. So let's say a whole bunch of thoughts just pop in with so much energy, anxiety, frustration, fear, any kind of lower emotion, even excitement. Just stop, center back in, and choose peace, you see. Just realize, okay, that's the ego mind coming in. Well, I have two parts to my mind. I can choose the mind of peace. And I, in fact, will choose the mind of peace now that I'm aware that my mind has gone in the direction of the mind of conflict, you see. Does this make sense? Waiting for Diane's answer. In the meantime, uh a question came up that said, I, I, I understand everything here is illusion, but the Course states that love will remain. How if it is an illusion? Well, love and the love that we speak of is outside of the world. So actually, the, the world is not without love, but it is without your awareness of it. Does this make sense? Meaning love is not something that is form you see, but is actually formless and is abstract, meaning it is not specific. It is 
general and it is all encompassing. But your mind must awaken to its presence, you see. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yes, it does. Wonderful. So love remains because it never left. That's really what it comes down to. Love remains because you have never been without it. It's only a thought in your mind that you could be, that you think that you are or have been. Okay. So really love is all that is. So when we said love remains, what we mean is love never left. Love always is and always was and just is. So it's the truth of God. Yes. And truth is eternal. Yes, indeed. And in fact, when we say love is and was, we only use that terminology here because you feel that you operate in a world of duality, which runs on linear time. Linear time is illusion. It doesn't exist. So when we say those things, we're just using it in a way to express something to you so that you can grasp it. Does this make sense? Yes. Because in truth, love just is, period. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a question from Camille. Is it my ego that won't let me fall asleep at night? I asked the Holy Spirit and got the answer, quote, accept. And I felt my resistance melt away and I slept. Still, I find this problem recurring. It is hard on my body. Can you help? Yes. So the reason why accept came in and when you did it melted away and you were able to fall asleep was because you stopped resisting the ego you see and see the ego doesn't actually exist but it's the belief in the ego that needs to be forgiven like we were saying before and so as you just accept that it simply is an experience in your mind and you stop fighting against it you will be at peace does this make sense Waiting for Camille. So, two, yes. two, okay, good. Yes. wonderful. So, just go throughout and just accept, like we said, accept. Don't fight it, just accept it. Make peace with it and just let it fade away. Does this make sense? Because the more you resist it, the more you are telling your mind that that is real when it isn't anything. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if Cecilia is here, but here's a question from her. My husband and I are trying to heal our relationship after I learned recently that he was having inappropriate communication with another woman. The affair was not physical, but the betrayal hurts the same. There is great remorse and repentance from him, and I'm doing my best to apply ACIM teachings to forgive him and heal my pain. I think it is working. I ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit daily to help me see this from his point of view and I would find it very helpful if you could speak about infidelity in marriage and how to get past the pain and trust uh, my husband again. Okay. Thank so you as always. you're welcome. So we're going to take it in this direction, which is truth. The real infidelity that you are experiencing is the thought that you can, could betray yourself. Does this make sense? Because actually nothing that someone seems to have done to you is actually where it's coming from, but it's coming from a decision in your mind. Does this make sense? Yes. And so also forgiveness of it is just to, to say, okay, this seemed to be something in my experience that was not what I wanted to experience. And I thought that, that we had it good and all of that. But the one you really want to connect with is your true self. 
Does this make sense? And that's really the relationship that you're looking to repair, so to speak. Does this make sense? Yes. If self and self were fully in alignment, nothing that happens in the world would shake you. And so that feeling of infidelity is actually coming from the ego mind, the false idea, the tiny mad idea that you could actually betray yourself, that you could destroy yourself, that you could cut yourself off from yourself, you see. And like we said, if self and self were at one as one, then nothing in the world could shake you, you see. Thank you. You're welcome. And that doesn't mean don't continue to have a good relationship with him and all of that. But what really needs to happen is to turn within and begin to connect with yourself, your true self, you see. Thanks. You're welcome. Yes. Okay, this question comes from Philip. When unexpected or even sometimes expected death, illnesses, injuries, diagnoses, disasters such as tornadoes and fires, pandemics or cancellations occur, what is the best and highest attitude and perspective to have? Beautiful. So like we were saying earlier, choose to align with peace of mind. And in that way, that's how you will interact with the world. Does this make sense? No matter what seems to be going on in the world, you can still maintain peace of mind. And so you want to operate from identification as peace of mind, you see. Yeah, waiting on Philip. So the way to look on anything is to first turn within, go to the stately calm within, choose to align with that, which is peace of mind, and then observe what goes on in the world, you see. Not that you want to choose peace of mind and then go out and try to look at things with peace, but you want to just align with peace and let peace guide you forward. You see, does this make sense? Yeah. Waiting on Philip. But does this make sense to everyone? You want to align with yourself as, as peace and then let that state of mind of peace guide your way. So that no matter what seems to come into your awareness, you simply are peace. Thank you. Thank you. Carrie asks, what is God's name? I am Abba, Father, Love, God, Master. All feel like descriptions to me. Lesson 183 says to practice, but this today. Repeat God's name slowly again and still again become oblivious to every name but his. Hear nothing else. Let all your thoughts become anchored on this. I'm guessing this is form versus content. And the answer is just a, quote, feeling of adoration and praise, trust and gratitude, bliss and love. Can you expand my awareness? Well, let's see. Yes, we did say the name of God. We never told you what the name of God is, because God actually does not have a name, okay? So we could say just God is, you see. And if you could practice that that way, does this make sense? Instead of thinking of God's name and thinking of all the different types of names that have been given to God, just say God is and sit in that 
you see. We don't necessarily mean sit down and physically sit in it, but but be in that that presence and that feeling of God is. Does this make sense? God is, correct? Yes. That's it. Just God is. Yes. And then remember, we also said this in the course. We say God is, and then we cease to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Here's a question from Reverend Tony. Jesus, in the Course in Miracles, you taught us that freedom is important and that while we shouldn't fight for freedom, we should certainly side with it. In San Francisco and New York City, many freedoms are being denied to people who are not vaccinated. I feel moved in the direction of doing something about this to side with freedom. I was not guided to get vaccinated, which I still feel fine about. However, I feel lots of negative judgment and rejection from the many associates who have gotten vaccinated and I'm feeling confused about my path forward. Can you comment on this? Absolutely. Freedom, like we said before, to a similar question, freedom is a state of mind. It has nothing to do with form at all, you see, but is a state of mind. So if you got vaccinated with a state of mind of freedom, you're in, a, you're in freedom. Does this make sense? But if you feel that you go and get the vaccination within a, with the content of imprisonment in your mind, and you're telling the story and saying that something outside of you can imprison you or can imprison your mind. Remember, you're a mind and not a body. So you've got to lighten up and not take it seriously. See, this is a form and content confusion situation. Thinking that the vaccination will actually harm you in the mind. Does this make sense? It will impinge on your freedom of mind, which it can't. Yes. Wonderful. It really can't. The other part to this is judgment. Obviously, it doesn't feel good to feel judged, but make peace with it and don't take them seriously either, you see. Don't take someone else's judgment of you seriously. Just be who you are and say, okay, well, this is where I am and just let it be, you see. Does this make sense? Yes. Wonderful. So, and remember a couple times back, perhaps, when we had similar questions come up, we said that you want to go with the option that brings you the greatest peace of mind, you see. So if getting the vaccine brings you peace of mind, then that's a good thing. If it doesn't, then don't and all of that. Does this make sense? I believe I have. Wonderful. Wonderful. Always peace of mind. Always peace of mind. So anything else? Thank you. Thank you. No, thanks. Wonderful. Here's a question from Deepa. It seems several phases are, phrases are used unkindly by course students towards each other, though their intention is most likely to be helpful. Being kind is something you teach, yet it seems very unkind to tell someone who has been raped or abused that they, quote, invented it. We are perfect love in our true reality, but while we are here in the illusion, Many very unconscionable acts are done by people to each other. And it seems very incorrect and unhelpful for someone to say that an abuser is really coming from a loving place. I think an abuser's actions speak to a great fear. They can't possibly be loving from that space. The abuser's actions are a call for love, but not love. Please comment and elucidate how this is used by the Holy Spirit Wonderful. to heal all of us. Okay, let's go back to the very beginning. It seems the course students uh, say some phrases right. 
the intention is most likely to be helpful, but they're unkind. Which is a misunderstanding of what we're teaching, which the kindness is actually what we're teaching, which would be to go within and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you with the most loving kindness that comes through, which is without your judgment. Does this make sense? So instead of making a judgment, say you were talking about someone who was just brutally raped. Well, the thing is that a lot of people don't even want to acknowledge that that seems to happen, you see. And so out of fear, they might throw up a course lesson. Does this make sense? Hmm. As a shield from to them to the situation, rather than looking at it with the Holy Spirit and saying, help me to see this the way that you see this, you see, help me to extend love or please extend love through me. I will take myself out of this situation and not judge, but just allow love to correct my view. Does this make sense? Yes, without judgment, yes. That's correct. Rather, we need to see what happens. Here. Yes, exactly, because these experiences happen in the illusion. There's no doubt about that. And it doesn't mean pretend like it's not happening to someone and someone's not having that experience, but it is to step back and not judge, but only love, you see. So with that, absolutely. And that is a, a common mistake that happens with so many students of the course and without realizing that what that comes from is fear, actually. I don't want to see this because you said this is illusion, you said, you see. And I'm going to pretend like that's not happening because I just can't handle that, you see. But what they're really saying when using the lessons in that way is actually an attack. Does this make sense? Because if you understood that it is but a dream, you wouldn't feel like you needed to defend yourself against it in the first place. And of course, not tell somebody who just went through the experience that, that they've got to forget the experience because it was just an illusion, you see. That's not how to go about healing, you see. So, and then the other part about love and Another misunderstanding is to think that the Holy Spirit is putting you through an experience to, to see love in things that are actually hate. Is this correct? Yes. Okay. And that's another common mistake that, that violence can be a form of love because love is ever present. And that, that means that behavior that is, that is not loving has to also be love in some way and i've got to figure out how that is so i've got to just let that be love somehow which is impossible because hate can never be love and love can never be hate they are two mutually exclusive systems of thought you see remember one is the ego and the other the holy spirit holy spirit is all love the ego is where the hate comes from does this make sense? And all of this is a decision in your own mind. So. Yes. Thank you for giving me your words. You're welcome. Absolutely. And we really want to reiterate that all of this is still a decision in your own mind. You see. So the way that you react to anything is a decision in your mind. Not, not the thing that you're reacting to, but the thought itself, you see which is in your own mind. So, and like we said, violence can never be love or loving. That makes no sense, you see. And that's a, a confusion of form and content because yes, overall in truth, love is all that is and that's all that truly exists. And that's what true reality is, is love. But not every behavior and not every scenario and not every situation in the dream is love or loving at all and to say that hate is also love is actually an attack on love love is not affected by that attack but you are you see your mind it 
is in conflict in that situation. Does this make sense? Because it can't reason with it. It can't make sense of that because it doesn't make sense at all. So it cannot be. That's why we remind you to say the simple phrases such as, I can see peace instead of this. Or this does not have to be, I can see peace instead of this. Holy Spirit, correct my mind. Holy Spirit, be you in charge. Holy Spirit, you show the way. And I will follow the way that you show, which is always of peace, always of love, always of clarity, and always of light. So, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And it looks like we are two minutes after. That's fine. 202. Well, anyway, it has been such a joy to connect with all of you in this way. Remember this, we are always with you. You are never without us. We are always with you. Just turn within, go to the quiet center within and sit there or be there for a little bit every day and let that guide your way. Remember, peace and the Holy Spirit are one. Conflict and the ego are one. Choose between the two, which brings you closer to God, who is love and who is peace. We love you and thank you for this experience with you. We are always with you. We look forward to the next time, but we are with you always. And now is the only time that is. Namaste. Namaste.